The Dexcom G6 sensor can be restarted and you can extend the sensor life by another 10 days or even more. In this video I'm gonna show you two easy ways how you can do this in less than half an hour and not risk damaging the Dexcom G6 sensor or transmitter. Let's go! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tom, I've been a type 1 diabetic for over 30 years and on this channel I help you navigate your diabetes journey. The first way to restart the Dexcom G6 sensor is by carefully removing the transmitter from the transmitter holder while keeping the sensor inserted to your skin. The second way is to disable the connection between the sensor and the transmitter by inserting a small object like a test strip in between these two pieces of this CGM system. I'm gonna show you each of these two methods step by step, but please keep in mind I'm not medical professional and this is not medical advice. Big disclaimer, what I will be showing you today is a DIY solution which I only used in emergency situations and is definitely not recommended by Dexcom or any medical professionals. So let's have a look how you can extend the sensor when it reaches day 10, which is the last day of the official sensor life. You can do it right after the sensor expires or shortly before that. If the sensor hasn't expired yet and you want to extend it, just go to your Dexcom G6 app click settings and then click stop sensor. Let me show you the first method. This method involves removing and reinserting the Dexcom G6 transmitter. So you need to remove the transmitter from the transmitter holder without breaking any parts of the transmitter holder and keeping the sensor itself on your body. The easiest way I found is to take a used test strip, stick it in between the transmitter and the oval transmitter holder and pop the transmitter out. There is a little tab on each side of the transmitter holder and you need to push on it with the test strip. And when you do that right, the transmitter will jump out of the holder. If it doesn't work with your test strips, then you can do it with a guitar pick or a credit card. These are all ways I have been able to do it quite easily. There is one female YouTuber who made a video where she's showing how she's using a hair clip to pop out the transmitter. And I thought that was really cool. So I went ahead and bought one of these bad boys. Usually I don't use them because I don't have hair. But it didn't work. So I went to watch her video again to see how exactly she does it. And I noticed that she actually takes the transmitter holder of her body and breaks it when she's removing the transmitter with the hair clip. Now guys, when you do that and when you remove the sensor from your body, obviously you will not be able to use it again. So I don't really get this hack that she's using. A good old test trip is the way to go for me. Once the transmitter is out of the holder, you need to wait for about 20 minutes. After that, you just disinfect the back side of the transmitter with an alcohol wipe and pop the transmitter back in. If you don't wait for 20 minutes, the system might recognize that you are trying to restart the sensor and it might not work. So always wait at least 20 minutes. Um, guys, if you hear like really loud music in this video, I'm sorry. If you hear cars around and neighbors around, I can't do anything with it. It's Brazil, samba time, everybody's having fun. So now let me show you the second method where you actually don't need to pop out the transmitter. You just need to stick a small object between the transmitter and the transmitter holder. And again, my test strip works really well for this. And again, make sure that your sensor expired or that you stopped the old sensor before you start messing with it. Now, I'm not sure if you ever noticed, but there is a little loophole on the narrow side of the transmitter where you actually need to stick the test strip into while keeping the whole thing together on your body. And you need to stick it in about an inch or so. The test strip will disable the connection between the diodes on the sensor and the diodes on the transmitter. So the system thinks that you removed the transmitter from the sensor, but you haven't. And it's not so easy to do, especially if the sensor is placed on your arm. So I find it a lot easier to ask someone to help you with it who can use both of their hands, because obviously I cannot use my right hand, I can only use my left hand, and that gets very difficult to do. And another hack that I use that I wanted to share with you is that I made a line on the test strip, which really helped my wife who was helping me with this. It helped her because then she knew, uh, because of the line, she knew how far she should push the test strip. When you're pushing the test strip inside, there is a bit of resistance. So you need to hold the transmitter holder quite firmly in place because the last thing you want is to tear off the whole thing. 
Once the test strip is all the way in, then again you have to wait 20 minutes and then you can simply take it out. And no matter if you use method 1 or method 2, after you waited 20 minutes, you need to activate the sensor in the Dexcom G6 app. And you do this just like if you were activating a brand new sensor. You're gonna need a 4-digit sensor code, so if you've kept the code from the sensor that you are extending, you can enter that one. And if you do that, then you will be using the same code twice in the row. But it's not a problem as long as you have waited those 20 minutes that I told you to wait. If you don't have the old code anymore, you can take a code from any other Dexcom G6 sensor, even from a brand new pack that you haven't opened yet. The reactivation of the sensor should work with any valid Dexcom code. So theoretically, I think you can even use one of the codes that I've used in the video that you have seen on the screen. But it will probably not work if you just make up a four digit number, if you know what I mean, because that might not be a number or a code that Dexcom has used on any of his sensors. And you can even activate the sensor without using any code. If you do that, you'll just have to enter your blood sugar from a finger prick every 24 hours and calibrate the sensor. So the preference, at least for me is always use a code so that I don't have to calibrate. By the way, I would be curious which of the two methods I show you today you like better. Uh, let me know in the comments below. I personally prefer the first one because that one I can do completely on my own and I don't have to ask anyone else to help me. Guys, if you like this video that you should definitely watch this video on the screen right now because in that video I'm showing eight more tips for Dexcom G6 users. What I showed you today is not how things are supposed to happen. It's an emergency solution and if you extend one sensor for too many times, it could lead to skin infection, inaccurate readings, and it is at your own risk. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Ciao!